Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here. Going to take a look at uh, video number seven dealing with example seven from topic nine four. Now we're finally into some interesting application problems. A lot of these are going to look very familiar for those of you who may have taken a physics course. Just want to revisit them and we'll talk a little bit more in depth about why the setups that you were taught in physics actually work. And our first example is going to depict two tugboats tugging or pulling a disabled cruise ship. So let's take a look. So here is our problem. Two tugboats are pulling a disabled cruise ship due east. One pulls with a force of 40 tons at an angle of 12 degrees to the northeast and the other at 50 tons at an angle of 18 degrees to the southeast. What is the resultant force on the ship and what angle does that ship ultimately travel. And I tell you what, when we express this angle, I would say let's go ahead and go for a degree setup uh, as we can probably relate to that just a little bit better. And I know that the homework problems are going to certainly ask for degrees. So one of the ways that you can certainly start this problem is by drawing a picture. It's not 100% required, but it can get the ball rolling here, so to speak. So um, I will try to do uh, the 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 best of my ability to draw this disabled cruise ship. So here's the the ship, and you know it's got a, several types of decks on it and so forth, and it's got this you know thing, whatever that thing is on a cruise ship. I don't know. So there's our cruise ship, and we do also know that there's a couple of tugboats. So I'll put one tugboat say right up here, and I'm purposely putting it at a at a position where I know that the angle that's made with the straight east horizontal here is going to be such that we are 12 degrees. You see how that's 12 degrees to the northeast. And I know that this particular tugboat here is pulling with a force of 40 tons. Well, we have another tugboat here. We'll call this the purple tugboat. That's pulling at an angle of 18 degrees to the southeast. So that's a little bit wider angle. And this vector that that boat is operating on is also a little bigger at 50 tons. Now here's the tricky situation. I suppose if we put 18 degrees here, it's not incorrect because we're just using that as a measurement in relation to that dashed horizontal line. But when it comes time to set up our vector equation, we need to rethink what that 18 degrees means. Also, it's very likely that some of you are looking at this and thinking, wait a minute, no, no, that's not the way I set up my problems. My teacher in physics or my teacher in this other math course said to always set up your vector so that everything was headed straight to the top you're welcome to do that. It still works. You're going to get the same answer. A lot of times with these problems, I like to really express the picture the way that the problem is, is, is explaining. And this boat is certainly moving to the east, like it says. And thus, that's why I had these vectors moving sort of to the right of the page. So let's go ahead and look at our setup here. Our force vector, capital F, I'll put the vector notation, is going to be our First of all, our vector using the black tugboat. That would be this 40 ton vector at an angle of 12 degrees. Well, we can set this up in component form. We can use IJ form. I'm gonna to elect to use the IJ form here. And we're gonna say, you take that 40, and if you remember from the previous video, we can actually multiply that by the cosine of the 12 degree angle times vector i, the unit vector i, and add to that sine of 12 degrees times vector j. Now I want you to take careful note here. This 40 is going to distribute to both of those. I could have written it twice without the parentheses, but I've elected to show that I'm going to distribute it in. All right, that takes care of our force that's being used for tugboat number one. Now I go to the purple tugboat and I essentially do the same thing. I have this force of 50 tons that's going to act, but now I take the cosine and here's where you've got to be careful. Now it matters. Now we have to make sure that we use 
negative 18 degrees in this particular case. And that would be both for the cosine and the sine components. Now, it's probably understandable that if you used positive 18, you would be thinking that this tugboat is moving off in this direction. And that's a completely different kind of scenario. I suppose that you could take 360 from or minus 18 and figure that same angle, and that's perfectly suitable. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because you're going to be using a calculator with these problems anyway. All right. Now, remember, if, if, if you recall video example six, that really explained the reasoning as to why throughout all of those courses that you've taken where you've set up these vector problems, whether it was trig or physics, why it makes sense to use this unit vector approach with ij component form. Okay, Now, from this point on, basically you're going to be using a lot of calculator work. And I'm not going to get the calculator out and start pushing buttons because I'm going to assume that you guys can all handle that. Although I am going to do one of these calculations for you just to show you um, a bit of an issue with the uh, TI Inspire that you're going to have to be careful of. So let's take a look at that. We're going to figure out cosine of 12 degrees with the calculator. So here we go. Let me move my picture out of the way here. And if we're going to compute cosine of 12 degrees, here's what you've got to be careful with. It's very likely that your calculator is innately in radian mode. And I'm going to be honest, I would just as soon as you keep it in that mode, especially those of you who are using the TI Inspire 1. It's a little tough to switch it over. Uh, it's probably a little bit easier if you're using a TI-84. Um, if you're using a TI Inspire 2, it's super easy. So for the TI Inspire 1 folks, if you keep it in radian form, you're just going to have to make sure that you put a degree symbol with your cosine. And I might suggest that you put a decimal in there so that you get nice decimal output. 0.978 would be the result there. Now, like I said, if you were to type this in and you were not very careful with that, you will get a completely different answer because you're finding the cosine of 12 radians, which is a bit different. Um, if you were to switch this rad to degree, which you can do that just simply by clicking on it, if you're using a TI Inspire 2, then you do not need the degree symbol, as you can see that you get the same answer there. And you're going to want to do that for all uh, of these angle measurements, even for the negative 8 so what we've got now after we do our calculations with RTI Inspire is 0 0.9781 multiplied by I. The sine of 12 degrees is 0 0.2079 multiplied by vector J. And then when we do the same thing over here, cosine of negative 18 is 0 0.9511 multiplied by I. And then for the sine of negative 18, you actually get a negative result. So I'm just going to use the negative as the sine in between the two components. And boom, we would have something that looks like that. At this stage, you would use your calculator to distribute your 40 and your 50 in. And you end up with 39.124i plus 8.316j plus 47.555i minus one more here, 15.450j. And I know that's a lot of decimals and whatnot, and it's perfectly acceptable if you consolidated these two steps into one by using your calculator throughout that process. You can combine the like components. 39 and the 47 term combined for an 86.679 times unit vector i. And then when you combine the j components, you get negative 7.134. And that would serve as the resultant vector, but it's not the resultant force. The resultant force is always going to be the magnitude of that vector. And that's really the first question that was being asked to figure out what is that magnitude. So when you take the square root of the sum of the squares of 
these components, which is essentially squaring the 86.679, squaring technically the negative 7.134, although that's not going to matter much because we are going to be squaring that negative. Taking the square root of that result, you end up getting on your calculator 87.968. Now, I would strongly encourage you all to not just rely on these answers and to make sure that you have your calculator with you and be able to follow along whatever kind of calculator you're using. I've had a lot of students who are like, yeah, I get this vector stuff. I watch the videos. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't type it in my calculator, but I figure I knew how to do that. And then all of a sudden, they find themselves on a test that, yeah, they understand the concept, but they're doing a lot of really wonky things with their calculator, and it's not producing the correct answer. So you certainly want to practice these. It would be nice to give this a label, and that label would be tons tons is measured in a force and I want to tell you what this makes sense because if you've got 40 and 50 tons working independently now they're not really cooperating so nicely in that they're both moving to the right so that they could really combine forces and say we're going to pull this thing you know with, with 90 tons of force that's not the case because of their angles that they make but you can see that they're being somewhat efficient and getting fairly close to that 90 tons next thing that we want to do is figure out what is the resultant angle that the ship travels and probably the best way to do that is just simply to take the inverse tangent of the y component which is negative 7.134 divided by the x component 86.679. Now, if you remember, we, we've always expressed the fact that the tangent of an angle is the y value over the x. It's the vertical over the horizontal. And, and in this particular instance, we're going to solve for that theta, so that's why we have that inverse sign. Now, if this is typed into the calculator, uh, if you're in radian mode, it's going to spit something out like this, negative 0.0821 rad radians. But if we want to convert this to degrees, we just multiply that by 180 divided by pi, and we end up with negative 4.705 degrees. Now, it would be nice to maybe explain a little bit what what is this angle what what are we talking about this negative 4.705 degrees well we should realize that we're measuring from this horizontal so the negative nature of the angle does mean that we're going to be having this boat this ship is going to drift just a little bit i don't know if i can actually make this shift the ship drift it's probably going to fall apart no yeah it's going to drift sort of at this angle like that so it would be nice to maybe clarify that a little bit. So we could say that this simply means 4.705 de degrees. Let's write that correctly. 4.705 degrees uh, south of east. It's a lot more clear, I think, when you mention that we're going to go south of this east um, particular uh uh, dashed line. Um, and that would really take care of answering the two questions that, that we would want here. A lot of these problems, you know, I, I, if I was grading these as an open-ended free response question, I, I would take a variety of ways that you would express this angle. Um, if these problems were multiple choice, then obviously a little bit more scaffolding would be required for the problem to say, hey, express your answer as some kind of a of a direction in relation to the horizontal and whatnot and that might help you a little bit but the key thing is just to practice as many of these problems so that you get exposed to the different expectations that are that are put forth anyway i hope this helps our next problem is going to involve a big old jet airliner that's moving with some wind in the way so we definitely want you to check that one out we'll see you next time